Matthew chapter 16. And the Pharisees, also with the Sadducees, so here we go, came. Now the Pharisees believe in angels and resurrection. Sadducees don't believe in any of them. And tempting to desire him that he would show them a sign from heaven. I mean, they're tempting God. They believe Jesus is God. Haven't we got 15 chapters? Has not the word gotten out? He's healing the blind, the lame, the deaf, the dumb, the devils are crying out. The feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000, the, the weather, the, the, the storms. Haven't they already asked him for a sign? He's already told him, no, I'm not going to give you one. And what they want is they want what the church wants today. They want a dog and pony show. Show me something. And I've had many times in the public ministry, which now, sorry to say, it's done with, is I've had people come up to me, well, show me God. I said, listen, Israel, from Exodus 20, 40 years in the wilderness, saw God. And they still gripe to complain. And still, Paul says, unbelief is the reason why they, they didn't get in the promised land. God could pop himself right here, right now. Many of you would not believe it. He answered the Senator, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. In the morning... It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. So a red sky at night, a sailor's delight. A red sky in the morning, a sailor's warning. Well, you see what they just did? They changed the Bible. It doesn't say anything about a sailor. sailor. They've taken the Bible... Everyday modern expressions and they rewrit the Bible. Oh, ye hypocrites! Oh, me, nasty Jesus! How dare you call? I mean, that would not that would not be today with the woke. I'm getting tired of this woke thing. Put it back to bed. Jesus called it what it was. I mean, I unburnt a bridge with a church. But I don't apologize for, the, for what I said about the teachings. I don't apologize for, for their beliefs. I apologize in the uncouth way I, I handled it. I called it as it was. There are no Christians in the Old Testament. Christmas, I found out another church just recently this weekend. A, a Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing church has a birthday for Jesus. Give me a break. And, and you know what follows? Well, we know it's not Jesus' birthday. Then why are you celebrating his birthday on not his birthday? You're a hypocrite. And then they went, which, you know, probably biblical is, well, we know his birthday would be about, you know, September, but probably, probably the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, we know when the Feast of Tabernacles is, celebrate his birthday then. Pick a Jewish feast, not a pagan feast. Now, I'm not going to get off that. I'm not sorry for saying that. Oh, you hypocrites. You're a hypocrite. I don't care if you like it or not. Okay, we'll all be judges, judges, see the Christ. If I'm wrong, I will suffer loss. If I'm right, you're in trouble. You can discern the face of the sky. You can look up the sky. And, and today, I mean, we got the vans with computers, and we got uh, radars, and we got satellites. We, I mean, a more advanced civilization we are today. But you cannot discern the sign of the time. It's El Nemo. It's global warming. It's climate change. It, it, you got it all wrong. 
It's God saying, listen, I'm going about to drop the hammer. This is the last time I'm going to warn you because I'm going to tell you right now, when I pull my church out, the time of the Gentiles ends. After that, regardless of what has been taught, the only way a Gentile is going to get saved is unknowingly helps the Jew in the tribulation period. That's the only means. And you can't look at what's going on. I mean, listen. I mean, the rapture may be five minutes, five years, 50 years. We don't know. But we are coming to that period of time. I would not want to think on how worse it could get. But it could, Lord Terry. These people are now involved with the woke. I don't know what sex I am. Uh, I don't know what kind of marriage partner I should have. If the Lord tarries, these people are going to go into government. They will be the presidents. They will be the senators. They will be the congressmen. They will be the mayors. They will be the police department. Then you would have a perfect Sodom and Gomorrah. We might have a lot more time left. I, don't, I hope we don't. I'll tell you one thing. It would be a worse thing right now. would be a worse thing to be right now. I know children are a heritage of the Lord, but it would be very bad to raise or bring up a child now. They got. Uh, I I only followed the headlines, and I had much happened this week. Something about there was a girl nabbed and killed by a, a delivery person. Or something. You can't trust your children on the street. You can't trust your children in a, in a store. Friends, were, it was not like this when I grew up. Man, I grew up. I had breakfast. I take off. My mom wouldn't see me to noon. I ate my lunch. I could take back off, and she wanted to see me to dump the, the, the dinner. And it wasn't a school night. If I didn't have homework after dinner, I wouldn't go out to a, to night camp. Then again, now I know she had little, little spies in the bushes. They know Mama had those. But you can tell the sky. You can tell the weather. You can't tell. You are sitting, and the people right now, the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, you are talking to God right now. You don't know it. And if you know you're talking to God right now, Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that. You have the authenticity. Hey, give me a sign. Who are you? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. You know, except if you're Pentecostal. You realize there's no signs looking for by the people today? There are people in churches, oh, go see a sign. You know, Russia's fighting Ukraine. Oh, that's, you know, that's just in the book of Revelation. And, and, and the nuclear missile, the tips, all that. This is the, the beast's crowns. And uh, you got it all messed up. But the unsaved are, and this is what we're doing with the unsaved, the Pharisees and scribes. They're not looking for God for anything. El Nemo did it. Global warming. We're looking for this big chunk of ice to fall off somewhere. I don't even know where it is. And all the oceans are going to raise two feet. All right, they're looking, for, but they're not seeking God. This is the, the time the Tower of Babel. All right, we built a tower. But they're not, they built the tower to go to heaven but not reach God. NASA is looking for signs not from God. We're looking for the aliens to call us. Meanwhile, all we're doing is we're polluting Mars and we're polluting the, the universe with our crap. Now watch what he says. Only adulterers generate secrets after a sign. There shall no sign be given unto it. Now they said of heaven, there's a sign coming. 
and just told them. But the sign of the prophet Jonas, that's Jonah. Jonas is Greek. Jonah is Hebrew. Look at that. You learned Greek and Hebrew today. You can send in your $2,000 scholarship fund and program to pay for the education to get that nice, great grant that won't get you a cup of coffee at work. Yes, I got a college education. It doesn't mean no good. In the secular world of uh, office management, There's a sign coming. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How many of his disciples, not counting Judas because he's going to kill himself, how many of his 11 disciples or the women that followed him in his, in his earthly ministry, how many came out with a lawn chair, maybe a cup of coffee, regardless it was the Sabbath and stuff, and came out at the empty tune at three days or three nights and sat there and said, okay. Abraham, in Genesis 22, when, when he takes his son Isaac and he leaves his men behind, three men, he says, we're going up top, and this is not verbatim. We're going up top hither, and we will return back. We will return back. Abraham believed in the resurrection. When Jesus resurrected, all right, the women came. They came looking for to put more cloths on a dead body. The disciples were in an upper room, locked, fear. Even the disciples didn't get and the disciples were there each and every time Jesus said three days, three nights, three days, three nights. Peter heard it. You figure Peter would be the first one there. And don't tell me, oh, if I could if I would have been living back time, you'd be just as dumb and blind as everybody else would have been. Only ones were at that tomb were the guards, and they were paid to be there. And he left them and departed. That's it. I already told you. I'm not giving you no sign. He's already told him before. The sign is Jonah. Jonah. And he already told him previously that we studied three days and three nights. In the heart of the earth, as Jonah was three days and three nights. You didn't believe me the first time? I'm not wasting my time. To say. Here it is. As a sign of Jonah, goodbye. See you. Have a good afternoon. You don't have to go in great detail when you're witnessing the people. All right, you witness somebody, all right, you, you lay it out, and you come across them again and say, listen, Jesus Christ suffered and died, was buried, rose again the third day according to Scripture. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. That's it. And when his disciples were come back to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Well, they just had, uh, I forget how many baskets taken up, but the 4,000. They didn't grab a basket themselves. They left it behind. And Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, is it because we have not taken no bread? <laughs> wow, you just totally missed it. He didn't say bread, he said leaven. No one said, hey, give me a nice slice of lemon, I mean, leaven with, with butter. Which, when Jesus perceived, he, he, they weren't talking in front of him, they were talking around him. And Jesus said, okay, I know your thoughts, I know what you're saying. He said, oh, ye little faith. The same thing he told Peter when, when he was out in the morning, began to think, you little faith. And the little faith is, all right, he's going to show them, if we fed 5,000, we fed 4,000, why are you so worried?
I'm here. Jesus is there. And listen, they ought to have had more faith than what we have. Listen, if if George Murrow, Murrow, I'll say his name wrong, can sit down at a table full of orphans with no food, bow his head and say, Lord God, bless this meal. There is no meal. And the wagon breaks down outside of his door and they give it to because the food's going to go bad. You would think, there is Jesus, there's the 12 disciples. Hey, he's going to take care of us. After the two miracles they just seen. So, in reality, they're doing the same thing the Pharisees and scribes. Disregard all miracles that Jesus done. He's not going to take care of us this time. He's doing the 40 years in the world. Okay, we've had, we've had, let's see, was it water? Okay, we got bread, we got water, we got bread, we got water. Oh, we need more bread. Oh, can God supply a table in the wilderness? How many times he's done it already? Now, if you come to it like, like me right now, if you come in your life where you are experiencing something brand new in your life, has never happened to you as I've had. Okay, there's a little fear there. And you guys, oh, you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. Faith is strong. All right. And this is funny. I'm gonna say this afterward. If you're sitting in church and faith and all that, and the smoke detectors go off and the building's on fire, you're gonna get panic and you're gonna head for the nearest. You're not gonna sit there and oh, we're gonna have faith. <laughs> Because it's funny because I was in the hospital yesterday and he's sitting there and the smoke detectors, fire alarms started going on. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm in a place where everything's locked up, including me. And no one's moving. Um, you can hear problems. Ten minutes later over the down, you know, there, there's a cold red over way over there. I'm like, okay. But I had an episode one time. This is just after I, I quit smoking. We were living in a, in a mobile home, so all of a sudden, whatever the thing was, I started smelling smoke. Uh oh. And I don't know, it was a, I think I had to drive. So I called the fire department. The fire department came, they specced everything out, got their heat gun. And I told, I told the fire chief, I said, oh, listen, I'm sorry. I said, you know, I said, does this have anything to do? I just quit smoking. Because yeah, once you quit smoking, your your nose, your, your smell becomes stronger. He says, listen, I, he says, I'd rather have you call a false alarm that you didn't know than rather not call an no alarm and come here and the whole place burns up. I mean, there is faith with Jesus and the Lord and this reality. I mean, if your child comes in a room, he's holding a razor, he's all bleeding, <laughs> uh, he's going to be healed. No, 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 no. You're going to get in the car, you're going to get on the phone, you're going to get nervous, you're going to get anxious. When you walk in the house, and I've had, your wife looks at you and says, we got to talk, you're going to get nervous. All your past sins that you ever done and didn't do are now going to start playing. What is her problem? Is it me? Is it the kids? Is it the sink is clogged? What is it? And God has given us, in us, fear factors. The fact is you start sweating. Your armpits start getting wet and they smell and, and, and you, you get goosebumps. That's, that's a warning. When you were walking down a path and a rattlesnake is there, he's not going to stick out his hand and say, how you doing? He's going to... That means stay away. When a cat goes... That means don't touch him. When a dog... Rah, 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 that means turn around and go the other way. When a bear does... Rah, you're in trouble. But what's the problem here? What is the little faith here? They're worried about food, and Jesus has already taken care of two miraculous times in their entire ministry. Now, if Jesus has done something for you over and over and over and over, 
and you don't get it the next time and the next time. I mean, if Jesus paid your bills 11 months and December comes, oh, who's he going to pay my bills? Um, you should get it seven, no, you get 11 times out of 12 in a year. And, but there is a thing, you can't say, oh, this is time, you know what, fear does come. You're supposed to fear God. But the disciples have seen, because look what Jesus said. Oh, little faith. Why reason amongst yourself? Because you have not brought bread. Okay, he knows what the problem is. There's no bread. All right, take it for granted. He was not there when he talked to the woman at the well. He told her he's the bread. All right, they weren't there for that. Do ye not understand? Oh, here we go. Neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand. Oh, remember that? Didn't we just didn't we feed five thousand with five five loaves of bread and two little fishies? Remember that? The little boy. Remember that? All right, uh, let's go to verse ten real quick. Neither the seven loaves among four. Remember, we just fed four thousand with seven loaves. And he says in verse 9, back to verse 9, how many baskets you took up? Verse 10, and how many baskets you took up? How is it you do? Look, look, look what Matthew does. Matthew does not record their reaction. He just asked the disciples a question. How many baskets you took up? We knew that uh, for the 5,000, I think it was 12. All right, the 4,000, I believe, was seven baskets. Matthew does not tell us the disciples answered. Because you just got a kick in the pants or uh, robe that you wore. There is no answering. When Jesus has done things over and over and over and over in your life, and you call him to question again, There's no answer. Because you know. How is it that you do not understand? Is that understanding again that I spank it not to concerning bread that you should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? All right. Now he's going back to what the problem was. We got a whole new thing here. All right. I fed you. I fed the 5,000. I fed the 4. Okay. You ought to knew, you ought to remember. Okay, I'm on a new subject here, 1611. Notice that. Matthew 1611. There, you are to be aware of the leaven and the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, he's going to explain what he said now because he's never said this before. Now, there's a thing called leaven. Of the Pharisees and Sadducees, and he says, Beware, it's not bread. Leaven in the Bible pictures sin. It is not ever found in the sacrifices of the Jewish law, except one. When it came to the Feast of, of Pentecost, then leaven was brought in, but we're not going to go there now. We're not at Pentecost. But think about the opening of the church, which we're going to read a little bit later, this chapter. We start seeing leaven. There is leaven in the church. Then understood they how he begged not unto them to beware the leaven of bread. Okay, it wasn't bread. They got that finally. But the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, it's amazing how they understood that in half a sentence. Because what he told them about the leaven is, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they get it. It's the doctrine. 
There is religious church occults and science of faulty so called. There is a teaching, there is a belief that is unclean, that is a sin. And Jesus said, Beware. Don't pass by their church or their building and say, say a prayer for it. You don't pray for the doctrine of the Catholic Church or the Mormons or the Jehovah Witnesses. The Bible goes even so far as the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons that come to your door. Don't even say good afternoon, good night, have a good day. And how can a preacher, a pastor of a church get up and say, Oh, pray by every church building you pass. When Jesus outright says, Beware of the leaven, they tell us it's the doctrine. There is a doctrine of the religion that is unclean, that is a sin. And we are told in the scriptures to beware. It's not a dead snake that you go poking at it. It's a live snake that there's one snake, I think it's the coral snake. If the colors ain't just right, it bites you, you're dead. But ooh, it has pretty colors. The wrong order of them colors means that this is a poisonous compared to this is a non poison. So that's what we are now. <laughs>